Hi, Mike here. In this video, I'm going to walk you through five cool tricks to take your slicers to the next level. I'll show you connecting a slicer to multiple pivot tables, changing the shape of a slicer, how to amend the slicer's heading text, changing the size of the slicer buttons and the color of the slicer's background, and how to use a slicer with a table. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the demo file from the link in the description below. I'll start with how to connect a slicer to multiple pivot tables. When I inserted this slicer, the cursor was in a cell in this pivot table. So Excel automatically attached the slicer to that pivot table. As I click the buttons on the slicer, it only affects that pivot table. But what if I want the slicer to filter multiple pivot tables? How do I do that? Before I show you that, you need to know that when you create a pivot table, Excel assigns it a name. So if I click into this first pivot table and go up to the Pivot Table Analyze tab, you can see that this pivot table's name is Pivot Table 1. This pivot table is Pivot Table 2 and this pivot table is pivot table three. The pivot table names can be changed, but I'll leave them as they are. If I click on the slicer, the slicer menu appears on the ribbon. I'll click on it, I'll click Report Connections, and it shows me the names of all the pivot tables in this file. Not just the ones on this sheet, but in this file. Actually, when I say all pivot tables in this file, because pivot table one was the active pivot table when I added the slicer, it actually shows me all the pivot tables created from the same source data as pivot table one. In most cases, that will be all the pivot tables in the file, but if you had several pivot tables and they weren't all created from the same data source, then they won't all be displayed here. So I'll tick pivot table two, and pivot table three and click OK. And now as I click a button on the slicer, you can see that all three pivot tables are filtered. Next up is how to change the slicer shape. By default, slicers are vertical. All the buttons are in a single column. But what if I wanted a horizontal slicer? Because there are five buttons, I'll set the number of columns to five. So again, with the slicer selected, go to the slicer tab on the ribbon and change the number of columns to five. Then I'll change the width of the slicer and change the height of the slicer. And I'm going to move my slicer and position it underneath the main heading. And although I don't have to do this, I will expand it so that it matches the width of the heading. And yes, it's that simple. Unfortunately, there's no way that I'm aware of to have the slicer automatically resize if a new button is added or removed. The next tip is a really quick one, amending the heading text on a slicer. If I click on the slicer and click on the slicer tab on the ribbon, on the very left hand side of the ribbon, you've got the slicer caption. So I'll delete out the word department and replace it with please select a department. Press enter. And you can see that it's updated the text at the top left of the slicer. You can actually hide the caption, but if you do, it also hides the two buttons on the right hand side. I don't often use the multi select button, but the one on the right I use a lot. It's the clear filter button. If you do want to hide the caption, click on the slicer tab on the ribbon, click on slicer settings and untick display header and click OK. Tip number four is how to change the height of the slicer buttons and change the color of the background. To change the height of the buttons, select the slicer, go up to the slicer tab on the ribbon and change the value in the height box. Now we've got two height boxes. It's the one directly underneath the number of columns field. 
So I'm going to change it from 0.25 to 0.5. And you can see that it's increased the height of the buttons. To change the background color of the slicer, you need to create a style. And to do that, click on the slicer, click on the slicer tab on the ribbon, and you can see the styles section. I need to start by duplicating an existing style, and that will give me a starting point. So I'll use this orange one here. Right click on it, select duplicate, and then give it a name. I'll just call it demo style. Not the best name, but it'll do for the demo. Now this is where the Windows and Mac versions differ. On the Windows version of Excel, you have a whole bunch of different options in that list. With the Mac version, it's quite limited. So I'll leave it set to whole table, click on format, click on fill, and set the background color to yellow. Click OK and OK again. Now you might think that that's not worked, but if you look at the styles dialog, the new style that I created has not been selected. But if I click on the new style button, it's now applied the background color to the slicer. If I right click on that style button, I can modify the settings for that style. I can even delete that button. Unfortunately, that's as far as we can go with Excel on the Mac. As I said, on the Windows version, you can change the button colors and you can apply other formatting customizations, but not on the Mac. Also, you can't modify any of the built-in styles on either Windows or Mac. So that's why I had to create a new one. The final tip is how to use a slicer with a table as most people only think slicers can be used with pivot tables. So I've switched to this sheet called table and I have some data here, which I have converted to a table. On the table menu, there is an insert slicer button. I'll click it and it gives me a list of all the columns in that table. I'm going to select the department column. You can select more than one, but I'm just going to select one and click on OK. It adds a slicer onto my sheet. It always sticks it in the middle. I will move it to one side. And now as I click the slicers buttons, it applies a filter to the table. Is that any different to using the traditional drop down arrows at the top of the table? Well, it provides the same functionality, but I think it's easier and quicker to click a button than a small drop down arrow. Plus, because the slicers are visual, it's easy to understand exactly what information is currently displayed in that table. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you in the next video. But until then, have an excellent day.